Hello and welcome back. We're just turning this great looking diesel locomotive around on the turntable there. And she's model number R55. We saw an earlier version of this last year in the all silver livery and she stayed that way until about 1958 when they uh, painted the cab red, I think to hide some of the, the poor, poor molding marks which, which appear in this type of plastic. But uh, I think she looks all the better for it. In uh, 1962, I think, uh, Trying Railways was removed from the sides and uh, it just simply had the word transcontinental. Um, I think that was in line with the, the newer Series 2 coaches, which we're just about to pick up here. And uh, 63, I believe for a very short period of time, she had an extra motor bolted onto the chassis, purely to create an ex extra noise, diesel sound, as if this model really needs to make any more noise. I think she looks pretty good with those coaches, doesn't she? And that, that sound really is quite distinctive, isn't it? Here we've got the box for the model, and on the end, paper label, R55, BB Diesel Loco. Box is uh, a little bit tatty, but uh, it, it's done its job. So we'll pop that down. Sort of brown cardboard interior. And here we've got the, uh, the red-ended R55. Stunning looking, isn't it? Really looks the part on the on the layout, doesn't it? Now, uh, I think uh, 57, 58, it got the red end changed from the, the silver variant that we saw earlier last year. I think it gained these rivets at this time to improve the look of the model. And the, uh, the little round glazing units did tend to pop out. So apart from that, I think the body's very, very similar, although the, the horns may be slightly different. I think the earlier horns had two two prongs and they may have been plastic and these, these are definitely definitely metal but uh, very severe striations in the plastic work which I believe is one of the reasons chosen to to paint the, the end of the model red although it does look far more impressive I think with the, the red cab ends like that so we'll just have a, a swift look underneath the model we have got the, uh, the motor bogey there coupling just held on with a flathead screw nice metal gears ribbed wheels which accounts for all that noise that we're hearing on the layout. Trying's name there and made in England. The model numbers have been removed and I believe that's because this, this part was then used on the, on the diesel switcher in the range which uh, they hadn't got the, I suppose if they had the model number for this and the dummy and then trying to put the, the diesel switcher model number on as well you, you would be running out of space. No, let's have a look at the back end there and see just where the uh, the chassis pokes through the, the bodywork there. Uh, we've got the uh, R55, which is this model, and then R57, which is the, the, the dummy variant of this. So you, you could make, make the uh, your train look far more impressive. Makes a bit of a racket, doesn't she? It's those uh, ribbed wheels which are responsible for that. Lovely looking motor, fairly tidy condition. It's done some work, but it's, I think it's in fairly original shape. You've got those oil pads at either end of the armature there that sit around the bearing. Got the, the worm over each of the, the drive gears. Wire pickup. Lovely lamp assembly there, isn't it? Very, very simple, I love it. Mark three coupling. Just held on with the uh, single flathead screw there. Great big heavy metal chassis, just a bent, bent steel. Rivet there for the uh, rear bogey. Battery box or fuel tank, just sort of plastic riveted, heat welded into the chassis there. Sleeves wheels, which I think we pointed out earlier. Lots of friction, you need to keep those clean. Mark three coupling and these Two protrusions here on the end of the chassis go into the back of the, uh, the plastic bodywork. And along with the, the two screws there, it holds the whole thing together. So we'll pop that down. We've got these two little screws here. They're, they're quite little, but they made up for it by putting two in. They're not quite grub screws, are they? So we'll, we'll pop those down. And then we'll have a look at the, uh, the body. That's where the, the securing screws go. They're nicely countersunk, which is, which is quite nice. And uh, that's where the, the two protrusions at the back end of the chassis there, what we just saw, go in. Lovely, lovely steps up there. 
So we've had a good look around the outside. So there's Triang's name and the uh, respective uh, model numbers there. R55 for the uh, power unit and R57 for the dummy unit. You can see the rivets there running right through in, into the inside of the model. Much better than the little plastic windows, I think. A little bit of oil splatter on the inside of the model, which is quite normal. Overspray from the, the red paintwork. And you've got these uh, little plastic inserts, clear plastic inserts with a running number on, which light up from the same bulb used for the, the headlamp. Really quite ingenious. Lovely, lovely looking thing, really. Very, very crude. Went on for quite some time in the range. And as I said earlier, I think uh, the uh, Canadian liveries went on in, into the 70s. Just making a way through points number seven there from the uh, inside to the outside line. Very well behaved through there. And we'll switch those points up behind them. Now, I think this model did make a brief appearance in the UK catalogue in Canadian national livery in 68 and 69. And then again in the early 70s uh, in a set RS101, the Overlander set of 1972 in a sort of bright orange color with transcontinental along the side possibly available in australia as well under the under the number r590 in 73 from what i've read terrific noise there as she storms down the incline that headlamp really does look terrific coming towards camera doesn't it lovely shine on the side of those silver coaches here we've got the uh, the 58 catalogue and there, there she is sitting on on the cover there terrific looking models on, on the cover of this uh, catalogue, aren't they? Somebody scribbled their name on there and then uh, covered in the O's there. But we can we can see the model pictured with the dummy unit I mentioned earlier there. And that's quite impressive, isn't it? Really would make your train far more impressive looking, I think. There's the, the older style transcontinental coaches. But if we, we go on to uh, page 17, you can see We've got uh, R55, which we're, we had a look at earlier, the, uh, the working electric model, and then R57, dummy end, non-powered. So it looks identical, apart from it doesn't have a motor bogey. And here we have the, uh, the diesel B unit, R58. So quite an interesting extra power unit on a, on a genuine railway. You see pictures of uh, these, these great big trains with these units without cabs to uh, give you more hauling power. Absolutely stunning looking things. The sound must have been amazing. So if we pop this down, we'll have a, a swift look at swift look at the models. So, so uh, if we have a look at the dummy unit first, here's the box. Again, it's seen better days. It's been repaired with tape. It's got a price there. R57 BB diesel loco non-powered. You can see it's been fixed with some tape there. A little bit of scribbling there. I'm not quite sure whether that's a price or something. So although the price is on the other end of this box, I'll we'll carefully open that and we'll slide out the model. So this is the, the dummy unit. So no no motor buggy in here, but apart from that, I think the, the body is identical. Lovely condition. So the box has definitely done its job. Still got two great big screws through the top of the model, holding it together but uh, I think that's pretty much the same deal, apart from we have no motor bogey here. So a uh, great looking thing. Let's just pop that one down for now. And then we've got the, uh, the B unit. Again, box is in fairly good condition. The tape's long gone there, you can see where that's been. Great big pieces of tape holding that uh, on the way out of the factory. So it gets to the store, imagine opening this for the first time. So we'll lift off the lid. And this has got packing blocks on either end, but they're not quite complete. The uh, securing inserts are missing. So this is an older, older B unit. It doesn't have, have the rivets. So we'll just see if we can uh, extract this from the box and have a, have a bit of a look at it. There we go. And I said it's an older B unit, it's got the, the Mark II couplings. But she does run really nicely with the other models. And I believe this can be found with the, the numbers at both ends. This just has it at the one. See, terrific looking thing. We've got the, the model number in there as well. Look, it's pretty, pretty 
pretty nice to see, isn't it? Great big striation running through the plastic though. It's uh, really is a problem with this color of plastic, I think. I don't know quite what causes it, or whether it's just the way it flows or cools during the molding. Now this has got those little plastic inserts in there. I have replaced some of those. They do tend to keep popping out. One of the screws has gone a little bit rusty in there. So lovely things. I think uh, this didn't remain in production long. It remained long enough to get uh, Mark III couplings. Um, I think it disappeared possibly uh, in uh, 1961 from the catalogue and the, uh, the dummy unit perhaps made its way right the way through to uh, 62. Again, possibly uh, not selling as well as the powered units. Although uh, what we will discover is that uh, what we really need is another power unit because uh, once you get this dummy on and that dummy B unit, what you don't have is enough power to haul the whole thing around the layout. So uh, I've actually cheated and uh, used a, a second uh, chassis, motor chassis, and put it in here. Otherwise it just won't, won't pull the models around the layout, sadly, especially up the incline. It's fine on the level, but you try and get it up the incline and you just get wheel spin. So much friction. These, and they are, despite not having a motor, they are very, very heavy. So we've got the uh, the B unit and the, the dummy unit on there, but with the uh, motor buggy in there. So we've got lots of pulling power available now as we come into the third radius curve. She'll slow down a little as she begins to climb. And off she goes, effortless. I don't think we've got any trouble there at all. Lovely shine on the side of the coaches and onto the suspension bridge. Now we're gonna magically change to the uh, first series coaches now. There we go. It does make up a very long train once you get each one of those on the rails there. And off into the distance under the gantries again. Terrific noise now, isn't it? All of those plastic wheels on steel track. Actually will slow a little down the side of the station again. All of that point work, there's a little bit of current fade there, I suspect. Back into the third radius curve, passing that TC Pacific and the uh, colourful hopper wagons again. Look at that, that's effortless. There's no way that would be uh, achieving that without the, without the extra motor bogey, sorry. And off into the uh, suspension bridge again. Look at the length of that train, I keep saying that, don't I? But, uh, that looks terrific. That is a really long train for my layout. That. Just watch that disappear under the gantries again and off into the distance. These first series TC coaches first appeared with uh, without the red stripe. They're available, or some of them were available from 1954. And they uh, changed over to the second series by uh, 1962. So quite, quite a time in the catalogue. I think uh, the Dyna R324 was the, the latest edition and is only found with uh, the uh, Mark III couplings and uh, the red stripe being uh, quite, quite a late entry to the range. I think uh, the, the Coach and certainly the Vista Dome were available as early as 1954. And the boxes are in a reasonably tidy condition, although some of them are missing their end flaps as, as we see here. So uh, they have sort of protected the models over the years. I'll just have a swift look. Look over them there, there's the Dyna, that's the one that's later in the range, I think. Early 60s, just for the, the two years, I think. So fairly nice to have the boxes, you can see. Sellotape's being used to secure the models in the boxes for the journey from the factory to the dealer. So, lovely items. Again, this one, we are missing the end flap here on the observation coach box. It's made with such soft, soft cardboard. And here we've got the, uh, the Vista Dome is in a, in a slightly larger box and it was a, was a price scribbled on the end of it there. To, the larger boxes just to accommodate the dome. So here we've got um, page 20 of the 58 catalog and, and like the diesel locomotive gain in the red cab I, I think these coaches um, gain, gain the red stripe either late 57 
or um, early 58. They, they didn't make it into the 57 catalogue with the, with the red stripe. They later went on to have the, uh, the Mark III star couplings as, as we're gonna see. So we'll just pop the, the old catalogue to one side and uh, have a look at these coaches. So there are the five of them. And we have the, uh, the coach, R24, I think available 54 to 61. And then the, uh, the Vista Dome, 54 to 61 as well. And then we've got the uh, the observation coach with this wonderful dome on the end. Uh, from from what I'm reading, it has a, a sort of lay, later date in it, but I'm not sure what, what its start date was. But uh, the book I'm reading says 57, but the catalogue it, it shows um, a bit earlier than that. And then we've got the, the baggage again. Quite confused on the dates on that as well. I think it, it's earlier than the book I'm reading, which says 57. So I think all of these coaches are largely available between um, 54 to 61, with the exception of the diner, which uh, I think was a late entrance. And um, that's got the seating detail in there. And I think this is only available with the Mark III couplings being first introduced in 61, lasting till, sorry, first introduced in 60, and only lasting till 61 when they were replaced by the, uh, the Mark II uh, or Series II transcontinental coaches. If you'd like to see a little bit more information on the, the Series 2 coaches, they were in a video a couple of weeks ago. Um, I'll leave a link to that in the description box and you can have a closer look at those there. But these are really terrific things. Imagine seeing these in the, uh, the old toy shop window. It must have been uh, quite impressive. A swift look at the, the baggage. And these doors do open, but they, they tend to vibrate open all the time. And I have sort of encouraged them to stay shut with, with a little bit of sticky tack on the inside. There's quite a rattle, you can hear the, the bogies rattling, they are plastic. I believe earlier, the, the earlier ver versions with the, the uh, Mark II couplings have, have metal bogies. Again, I've got those in, in, a, in a much earlier video. I'll leave, I'll leave a link to those. They're quite an impressive set of coaches. And here's this wonderful Vista dome there. Look at all that seating. I'm not sure whether different colour seating or different colour floors were available. I'm sure I've read somewhere that they are. There's no, no seats on the inside of this coach. Then we can see the striations and the old plastic work there. It's quite severe, isn't it? And they're running up there. So we'll pop that down. Have a look at the Vista Dome. Again, I have an idea that different coloured seating arrangements are available for these. Again, no interior seats. So, quite pretty things. They do rattle though. They could quite a pronounced rattle on, on the railway. And we'll have a, a swift look at the coach. Again, no interior seating. I'm not sure whether trying made a, a seating variant to go in these or not. Well, I think that's probably it for this time. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've had great fun making it. I apologise about my voice. I'm slightly losing losing the power of speech here at the moment. But I've wanted to run this group of models for quite some time. I've really enjoyed uh, putting this video together. I've had a, a great time with it. Thanks again for watching. If you look back again next time, we'll have something else from the range to look at. Goodbye now.